We are going to do lesson number six. Soon we will be delivered. Let's bow our heads in prayer first. Father in heaven, thank you that you use me as your servant to teach your word and give hope and love to others that comes from you through me. I pray for everyone watching and listening. I pray for those who are hiding and running in Bangladesh. I pray for the wars going on all over. I pray for the persecution in Pakistan. And I pray for the persecution in different areas of Africa. And I pray, Lord, for the persecution going on right here under our nose. I pray your coming will be soon. Fill me with your spirit and let my spirit speak your words, not mine. For I know nothing unless you tell me. And I pray for those watching that they too will be filled with your Holy Spirit. And the latter rain will come soon. And that it, your message will finish going to the ends of the earth. And you will come as you promised. In Jesus' name, thank you for being here with us. Amen. I have been receiving a lot of messages. I pray for each one of you that uplift your trials and troubles, deaths, persecutions, the things that are going on all over the world. But let me tell you something, folks. You know what? God wants for us happiness and peace and joy. And this is hurting him to see you being hurt. So he doesn't want this. And soon he will say enough. And Jesus will come. The cup of abomination of sin and evil will be full. And Jesus will come, I promise you. From this word, it tells us that. We will have an ultimate deliverance from our Lord God, Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we all know of the unrest nowadays. All we got to do is turn on the news, but it seems we've kind of gotten used to it. We don't see how close the coming is. The coming of Christ. Because the birth pains the Bible tells about in the earth, we are not noticing them. Because we hear so much happening through the years. We don't realize how fast they're happening now. They've just become, oh, there's, there's a flood here and a tornado here and a fire here. You know, just everyday stuff to us anymore. No, no, no. No, don't let it deceive you. We are near the coming of Christ. If you haven't given your heart to the Lord so you can be delivered when he comes, I pray you will do it now.
we look into the Word, we know for certain that Christ will come again. Let's look at Hebrews 9, verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. He sure was. He bore the sins of the whole world. And upon them, or unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. It's going to deliver us. Those that are counting on his righteousness to save them. Those who have the faith from reading the word and from having their prayers and communication with him. Those who are out telling others, Jesus is coming soon. It's a wonderful thing going to happen. Soon we won't have any death and pain and sorrow. Because it will overflow in us that we will have to tell it. Jesus is coming soon. He cares. He's going to end this. He's not going to allow us to keep hurting. The plan was to allow the earth to be a theater, the Bible says. And everyone could see from unfallen worlds to unfallen angels that this is what happens because of evil. It's already had to be destroyed. The earth did once. Only eight people were saved in the flood. Only eight were able to be saved that went into the ark. Are you going into the ark of safety, Jesus Christ? At times I cling to the hem of his garment like the woman who went to him in faith and couldn't reach him but touched his garment, the hem of it and was healed. None of us are living an easy life that care about Christ and good. And it's sad to see those that don't and try to make their pleasure from the world and they will not have real joy and they will not have a mansion they will not walk the streets of gold they will not be delivered John 14 verse 3 Jesus said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And Jesus is good for his word. Every promise in this Bible, his promises, God's promises are true. They cannot lie. It's impossible for them to lie. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Hallelujah.
I'll get to see my kids again. Hallelujah. So in Matthew, um, Twenty six sixty four. Let's look at that before we read on. Jesus saith unto him, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Hallelujah. I shall see him on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Scriptures goes together all the way through. In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis, when Jesus said to the serpent, He shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. Christ was going to crush him. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, the Bible goes together. And also we've got John 10, 35 written down here. So let's look at that. Oh, it says here to Moses, under whom the word of God came. Let's see, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. And if he called them gods, under whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him, when the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? Jesus' word cannot be broken. The word of God cannot be broken. This is proof positive. It is Christ's own personal guarantee. Besides, Jesus fulfilled the prophecies of his first coming. So we can be absolutely certain that he will fulfill the prophecies concerning his second coming too. Just like he came the first time, and he said in the prophecy he would. It's like he promised that he would come and be a savior and deliver his people. Only they didn't understand the deliverance. They thought it was from the Romans. No, it wasn't from the bondage of the Romans. It was from the bondage of sin. He crushed the head of Satan.
In what manner will Jesus return the second time? Okay, the scriptures tell us that Jesus will return in the same manner that he left. And let me see if I can find that. Yeah, here. It's in Acts 1. Because there were angels all of a sudden as Jesus was going up and the disciples had gathered there with him. And, and they were watching him go up into the clouds. And there was, um, was there angels or an angel? Two, two angels. I won't forget that now. <laughs> now they were to go and wait and pray for the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon them. But she shall receive power, Acts 1 verse 9 says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. We think we're going to do. We have to have power from the Holy Ghost. Or our message is bland. It it may cause an excitement, but the anointing is an honor of the Holy Spirit. And we had spoke when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, while they looked at him, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he was, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And they said, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner or the same way as ye have seen him go into heaven. In the same way. In the same manner. The same type of way. So we have that promise from the angels when he went up that he will come again. Okay, it will be in a visible, bodily, personal manner. Matthew twenty four thirty says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Hallelujah! Our Savior will deliver us from this earth. No one, no one, Nothing, be it angel, man, 
anything can convince me that my Jesus is not coming again. He promised and he will. I know it because I know him and I know my father and I know this word of God. I'm sorry for all the suffering, the videos you send, the things that I see. I'm so sorry. But I promise you, it will end. Children being hurt, raped, from babies up to women, sick, devilish, horrible things happening. And yet most of us sit in our easy chair reclining. Watching. The one-eyed monster. Pleasant stories on the TV. Shame on all of us. We should be announcing Jesus is coming. Repent. As John the Baptist said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Give up your sin. Give up the world. Give up your desires for earthly things. Commit yourself to God. When you do, it says the devil will flee from you. Believe his promises. For those of you that need food, we all prayed and they did too. And God delivered food to a, a vast amount of people that needed it. It came to them. He supplied their needs. You must believe these promises, what it says. I know this for a fact, and it happened very recently. God cares about everything you're going through. He just wants you to believe in him and have faith in his promises and his word. He promises he loves you. He desires good for you. He will supply your needs. If he takes care of the sparrows, he said, won't I care for you? Isn't that what he said? If I so clothe the lilies of the field, will I not clothe you? Isn't that what he said? Believe him. For years, I didn't understand this. I didn't understand God's supreme love. I didn't know it, but I know it now. Not every day is up, but some days are in the valley. But I have brothers and sisters in Christ that lift me up in prayer all over the world, and I thank you right now. And others that I converse with. That tell me promises to claim. From God's word. They remind me that God is faithful. We must do this for each other. We must hold on to Christ. We must commune with him like Jesus did in the early morning hours. Wake up thinking about Jesus. We don't have much time. Which is a good thing. I'm glad. But I don't want anybody that can be saved to be lost. And you can be saved if you put Christ first. 
if you don't care what anybody else thinks about you. Let's read Luke 24, verse 36. Oh, they were in the upper room, and they were scared, and they didn't know what was happening, and they had heard Jesus had risen. Jesus had risen. And the men had come back and told them that they had seen Jesus and walked with him and talked with him. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself appeared, stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted. They'd seen him die. They'd seen him go into a, uh, be laid in the tomb. And suppose that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do you think? These thoughts arise in your hearts. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Jesus is telling the disciples. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were yet believed not, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it, and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled that were written in the law of Moses. Those things were fulfilled. <laughs> and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. That means all of this back here is relevant. It's about Jesus. All relevant. The whole Bible. His coming is going to be visible and scriptures are clear on these facts. Now, it also tells us uh, let's see. In Revelation 1, verse 7. Let's read that. Talking about Jesus. Behold, he cometh with clouds and Every eye shall see him. 
I don't know how every eye will see him, but I know that anything is possible with my Lord and Savior and my Father God, and every eye will see him. Now, y'all might see a spurious one, that one that's not true on the TV, because Satan's going to come and pretend he's Jesus. And he's going to speak all soft and sweet and tell you the commandments don't matter and the Sabbath doesn't matter and do what you want to do. And he's doing it right now in some different places with great followings. His demons are. It's happening now. But he's going to come and act as if he's Jesus coming. And he's going to lie and be deceptive. He's going to try to fake the coming. But Jesus' feet will not touch the earth. Because in 1 Thessalonians 4, and I repeat this over and over again so that you will understand that Satan is going to pretend to be Jesus. Here it is. Here's what's going to happen when Christ comes. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now, when the Lord shouts, I think the whole world's going to hear it, don't you? If he can speak something into existence, I'm sure they will hear it. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. It's a lot of noise. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that have gone to sleep in Jesus will rise up out of the graves. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain, the faithful, his people, will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Jesus will not touch the earth. Everyone will be caught up together into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Praise the Lord. And so, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. That really touches me. Verse 18 says, Wherefore comfort one another with these words. As I was growing up and each one of my brothers and sisters started leaving home, life became lonely. And then when my dad passed away, at age nine, it was very lonely. We were very close. And I used to look out the window and just daydream of a perfect life I was going to have when I got away to myself. But it never happened. Never. God allowed me 
to go through things that most people don't have to go through. But you know what? I praise him for it. And you know why? Because if I hadn't gone through those things, I would not be who I am today. And I would not be able to help the amount of people that I can help and understand today. There's someone special in my life who's like that too. And I'm very thankful for him and This person understands me better than anyone else does. And loves me the way that I never thought that I would be loved. God has been gracious to me in this end time of earth's history. Every man, woman, and child living in the world when Jesus returns will see him at his second coming. The staggering brightness of his appearance will stretch from horizon to horizon and the atmosphere will be charged with a brilliant glory. We cannot imagine it. So much brighter than the sun. It's be like lightning, it says here, but it'd be even brighter than that. No one will be able to hide from it. It will be a loud, dramatic event in which even the dead are raised. Now watch out. The devil can cause it to look like the dead have been raised through his bad angels, his demons. So don't let that be a sign to you. You must know your Bible. You must be led by the Holy Spirit because it's going to be so enrapturous when the devil does this if you don't know your scripture and you don't know the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ you are going to be tricked you will be this is why the preachers will tell you it's all or nothing there's no middle ground there cannot be. There just cannot be. Have to go all the way with your Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible plainly states the second coming will be a literal, worldwide, visible, personal appearance of Christ in the clouds. And who will come with Jesus at his second coming? Matthew 25, verse 31.
Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So all the angels of heaven are going to come with Jesus. going to be as a bright cloud nears the earth. It says Jesus will send forth his angels and they will quickly gather together all of the righteous people in preparation for the trip back to heaven. Matthew 24, 31. The angels will be there, your guardian angel. They're always with us. We at least have one. And those that working hard for the Lord, they have quite a few surrounding them. And I've said it before, if our eyes could be open, we would see actual angels holding back evil angels protecting us an actual fighting going on I'm sure it's not like the fighting we know either Revelation 22 12 this is this is wonderful this is this is hope And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Why will your work be good? Because you have God's love in your heart, and you desire to be good. Because good works are not going to get you there. Don't think you're counting up points for heaven. It's not happening that way. If you have good works, you will have them because Christ in your heart. John 14, 3, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. One of my favorite verses. One of my favorite verses. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're going to come again. Praise your holy name. Praise you, God the Father. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you. I praise you. Thank you for going to come and take us out of this. Thank you for a glorious home that we can go to. Praise your name. So the righteous people will go up with Jesus into the clouds, into heaven. But those that are wicked, Isaiah 11, 4 tells us that with the breath of his lips he shall stay the wicked. Jeremiah 25, 33. At that day, when it says that day, it means the second coming. The slain of the stank, I'm sorry. At 
At that day, the slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth even to the other end of the earth. That's in Jeremiah 25, 33. The brightness of his coming, they will not be able to endure. They will cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and hide them from the face of him. For they know they're wicked. Just like people, you know, they tell somebody you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. You know what? Most of the time the people already know that they shouldn't be doing that. But when they learn of the love of God, that's what changes them. That's what brings about a change in people. They find out how much God loves them and they say, Oh, I want to be his forever. He loves me so much. Because people know what they're doing wrong. The majority of the time, they know. Now, a child, we teach gently. And we lead them the right way. And we tell them about Jesus dying on the cross for them when they get old enough to understand. And then they fall in love with him and they want to do right. But those who are continuously living in sin and not wanting to change, they will run from the Jesus' glory. And it, it tells what's going to happen even to the earth. Um, uh, let's read Revelation 16, 18 through 20. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. There was a great earthquake. Such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty a quake, an earthquake. that had not occurred since men were on the earth, that every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Jeremiah 4.26 And I beheld, and indeed, the fruitful land was as a wilderness, and all its cities were broken down at the presence of the Lord. That's in Jeremiah 4, verse 26. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was as a wilderness. I had a dream that there were no bushes, no trees, not anything. Desolate. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. I reckon he is angry, don't you think so? I 
I can't stand to see a child hurt. People know that about me. Imagine how the Savior feels. The little children that he took on his lap and blessed them. And said, forbid them not to the disciples when they wouldn't let them come to him. Jesus loves the children. And it tells, if they do anything to a child, it's better that a millstone be hung around their neck. You know, one of those grinding wheels at a mill where you grind wheat and things. That it be hung around their neck and they're thrown into the depths of the sea. So, I have righteous indignation against any child being hurt. Let alone to know that they are being mass murdered and raped along with the mothers. It's appalling, but it's showing what evil leads to. It's showing that when God puts an end to sin with fire and brimstone, he is doing a strange act for him, but the right thing. And making sure it never rises again. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus cried at the tomb of Lazarus. when he saw the others weeping because they missed Lazarus. I just feel I just wouldn't be surprised. I can't say this. There's nothing biblical. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jesus had tears in heaven. I don't know that. I'm just saying that's the way my Jesus is. Isaiah 24, verses 1 and 3. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad, the inhabitants thereof. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. I talked to somebody recently that didn't want the devil causing them problems. 
So they felt it would be better just to do whatever they wanted to do. Now this is the end they will come to. So the earth is going to be seized with a great earthquake at the coming of the Lord. And it will be so devastating. The state of the world will be total destruction. And only those caught up in Jesus will be safe and be saved. We see signs along the way in Matthew twenty four thirty three. It tells us as we see these things that we're seeing today, and some of us are just going on as if things are going to change. It's not. It's going to get worse. It says, "Know that it is near at the door." Matthew twenty four thirty three. And that one stone shall be left on another, he said about Jerusalem. That let those in Judea flee to the mountain. That happened in AD 70 by the Roman warrior Titus. Now there will be another great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world. Matthew twenty four twenty one. And that was through the Dark Ages. It lasted more than a thousand years. Over 50 million Christians were slain by the false church mixed with paganism, which shed more innocent blood than any institution that has ever visited mankind. This is by W.E.H. Leckie. History of the Rise and Influence of the Spirit of Rationalism in Europe. Uh, it's a reprint in New York, Brazil, year 1955, volume 2, pages 40 through 45. So I'm speaking history here. And then in Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. That's already been fulfilled. May 19, 1780 was the great dark day. And candles were lit and the birds were silent, disappeared. Um, it was just the very opinion was that the judgment was at hand. And uh, the Connecticut Historical Collections compiled by John Warner Barber, 2nd edition, New Haven, Dury and Peck, and J.W. Barber, 1836, page 403. You can find that information. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. The moon became red as blood on the night of the dark day, May 19, 1780. One observer said in Stone's History of Massachusetts, the moon, which was at its full, had the appearance of blood. And also it says the stars shall fall from heaven, Matthew 24, 19. A stunning star shower took place on the night of November 13, 1833. It was so bright that a newspaper could be read on an otherwise dark street. People thought the end of the world had come. Look into this. It's most fascinating. And a sign of Christ coming, one writer said, for nearly four hours, the sky was literally ablaze. Uh, 
A. Millman, The Falling of the Stars, The Telescope 7, May to June 1940, page 57. Matthew 24, 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man shall appear in heaven. So these things have already happened. His people just haven't been ready for him to come. But there's happening a worldwide movement now. Half a million were baptized in one country in one day. And the sign of the Son of Man shall appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Of course they're going to mourn. They didn't listen. And they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew twenty four thirty. This is the next great event. This is the next great event event are you ready father in heaven I've given the message that you gave me I did it for you without fear because you fill me and you don't give the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind and I pray for all those listening especially in the countries such as the United States where life is a little easier. It's going to be a little easier to just let the second coming not matter. To not worry about it. We have easy chairs, that's for sure. And it's a shame they were ever invented. I pray that those that see this will take out their Bible and they will look heavenward. They will get up early to start their day, earlier than usual, to talk with you, to praise you, to pray for others' salvation. You know their needs. They don't need to be whining and crying about their needs. You know it. They need to tell you and have faith. That you'll give it to them. Now that we can't come to you crying. But everybody is so worried about themselves. Because persecution is not as bad here as it is in other parts of the world. Or people would be crying out for each other. And would be more caring. Oh, Lord, all I can say is your will be done. I pray for the Holy Spirit to go to each that hears this message and that they will turn their lives over to you and that we will meet in heaven on the sea of glass, that we will meet around the tree of life, that we will be there for this supper of the Lamb. In Jesus' holy, precious, blessed name, amen.